people have to live in, in unity. We are still in transition. Civil society has been decimated. Of course we rely on media. And I think the government has not done enough. The international community has failed to respond. No place in the world is perfect. The yoga event is held here. Severe injustice and they should be stopped. We should raise our voices. Condemn this uh, brutal act. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button. Hello viewers, welcome to Newsweek South Asia, a program that talks about the breeding of terrorism and its impact on South Asian nations. Let's begin with the headlines first. Pakistan intensifies cross-border shelling at LOC. Indian Army chief calls out Pakistan for fomenting terror amid COVID-19 pandemic. Over 1,700 terrorists names removed from Pakistan's watch list. And people in Gilgit, Baltistan raise voice against misuse of Anti-Terrorism Act. This week, Pakistan once again resorted to cross-border firing at LOC to infiltrate terrorists into Indian territory. However, Islamabad's consistent efforts to wreak havoc in Jammu and Kashmir through motor shelling and attempts of infiltration received a befitting response from the Indian Army. Besides that, proactive Indian defense successfully eliminated four terrorists hiding in Kashmir Valley recently. And it's not a one-off breakthrough, but the forces have been successful in busting all the nefarious anti-India plots hatched in the corridors of Islamabad and Rawalpindi. A report. Receiving a shot in the arm, Indian security forces recently neutralized four terrorists in a gun battle in Kashmir's Shopian district. Security forces received a tip-off about terrorists hiding in Melhora area of the district, following which a search and cordon operation was launched that led to a gun battle as terrorists opened fire towards security forces. Moreover, Indian security forces also busted a hideout of terrorists in Srindhara area of Poonch district and recovered a huge amount of arms and ammunition, including one AK-47 rifle, three AK magazines, 43 AK rounds, one Chinese pistol and one pouch of ammunition from there. रात से चल रहा है ऑपरेशन इसमें चार से पांच आतंकवादी के छुपे होने की खबर मिली थी और वर्तमान समय में चार आतंकवादी को मार गिराया गया है और एक संभावना है कि अभी भी एक अंदर छिपा हुआ है जो कि अभी सर्च हमारा चल रहा है सर्चिंग के बाद ही पता चल पाएगा कि उसमें एक और है या नहीं है फ्रस्ट्रेटेड बाई रिपीटेड फेलियर्स एट फॉर्मेंटिंग टेरर इन कश्मीर the Pakistan army has intensified the range and frequency of cross-border fighting at the line of control. This week too, Pakistan launched unprovoked rounds of ceasefire violation by firing artillery guns and intense shelling along the LOC in Poonch district's Manakote sector in Jammu and Kashmir. This attack left one civilian injured who was later admitted to hospital in a very critical condition. Locals living near borders are terrified because of continuous shelling by Pakistan. They say the firings have made their lives difficult, especially amid the ongoing pandemic. However, the Indian Army has been strongly retaliating against these ceasefire violations, resulting in heavy exchange of fire. आज पाकिस्तान ने फिर से अपनी नापाक हरकत करते हुए जो है सीज फायर यहाँ पे वायलेशन किया काफी हैवी फायरिंग उसकी तरफ से की गई तो जिसका जवाब हमारी इंडियन आर्मी ने भी दिया तो एक तरफ ये जो कोरोना वायरस चल रहा है पूरा जो हर देश जो है वो इस कोरोना वायरस की जंग लड़ रहा है और पाकिस्तान पता नहीं अपनी हरकतों से बाज नहीं आ रहा जैसा की आज यहाँ साढ़े से के बाद जो शाहपुर किरनी कस्बा साइड में शैलिंग हो रही है और बहुत ही भारी फायरिंग हो रही है पहले तो लोग बहुत ज्यादा डरे हुए हैं हर दूसरे दिन दूसरे दिन के बाद जो फायरिंग हो रही है पाकिस्तान की तरफ से उसके बाद जो हमारी इंडिया की जो आर्मी है ये भी जवाब दे रही है इवन द लॉकडाउन ड्यू टू द कोविड 19 आउटब्रेक हैज नॉट डिटर टेररिस्ट फ्रॉम पाकिस्तान फ्रॉम मेकिंग इन्फिल्ट्रेशन अटेम्प्ट द स्कमिश अलोंग द एल ओ सी हैव बीन टेकिंग प्लेस सिंस द बिगिनिंग ऑफ द ईयर डिस्पाइट द कोरोना वायरस केयर 
According to authorities, terrorist activities have amplified in the last few weeks as ice has started melting along the line of control and infiltration attempts are being made on a regular basis. Last week too, a terrorist belonging to an outfit linked to a park-based terrorist organization lashkar e taiba launched an attack at a security check post in Kashmir's support district that claimed the lives of three Indian security personnel. Earlier in a separate incident, terrorists belonging to Hezbul Mujahideen killed an on-duty special police officer and critically injured his colleague in Kishtwar district of Jammu and Kashmir. Later, the army and police launched a massive search operation to track them down and eliminated both the terrorists as they opened fire towards them. SPOs of the uh, SOG post at Tandar, they had gone on the higher reaches for patrolling and they were attacked by the two terrorists of Hezbul Mujahideen, namely Basharat and Ashik. Uh, after the attack, they fled with their weapons. One AK-47 and one INSAS rifle was taken away. Senior officers of the police, army, CRPF, they all camped at that location and started the search. After three days of meticulous search and, you know, very hard work, they were able to zero in at a place called Sondar and uh, there was a nala going behind Sondar area where they had hidden themselves. And when they were uh, searching that area, the terrorists opened fire on them. And in retaliatory action, both the terrorists were eliminated. While the rest of the global community is busy helping each other by sending medical teams and medicines during the difficult time of pandemic, Pakistan is continuing with its old devious tricks of exporting terrorism to India. Pakistan army generals who are at the helm of forming policies against India must realize at this point that all their strategies have proven to be counterproductive. It is in their interest if they stop hatching anti-India plots and focus on the welfare of their own people. Coming down heavily on Pakistan's various activities against its neighbors, India's Chief of Army Staff Manoj Mukan Naravane called out Pakistan for propagating terrorism in the subcontinent, especially when the countries in South Asia and around the world are dealing with coronavirus pandemic. While India is busy finding advanced techniques to fight the pandemic, Pakistan seems to have shifted its focus towards using COVID-19 as a weapon of terror, a report. Chief of Indian Army Staff Manoj Mukund Naravne slammed Pakistan this week for exporting terror at a time when the world is struggling to control the spread of the novel coronavirus. Calling out Islamabad over unprecedented cross-border firings that have been claiming lives of innocent Indian citizens, Naravne exposed Pakistan's infiltration attempts at line of control. Earlier this month, we had an infiltration attempt which was successfully filed and we were able to kill all five terrorists who were attempting to infiltrate. Indian Army Chief's statement comes at a time when the world is facing a crucial medical emergency. The urgency with which Naravne had to come out public on Pakistan's ongoing nefarious activities in Kashmir clearly shows Islamabad's desperate attempts to unleash chaos in Kashmir. It is a very unfortunate that at a time when the whole world and India is fighting this menace of this pandemic that our neighbour continues to try to foment trouble while we are busy not only helping our own citizens but the rest of the world by sending out medical teams and even exporting medicines. On the other hand, Pakistan is only exporting terror, which does not other well. And the responsibility for maintaining peace, the onus is on Pakistan. There has been an unusual spike in ceasefire violations by the Pakistan Army on the LOC this year to help infiltrators sneak into Jammu and Kashmir compared to border violations in the previous years. The violence at the LOC is only possible with the support of Pakistan military establishment, says Naravni. This attempt was being made under very difficult conditions with uh, snowfall 
and the area from which they came it uh, could not have been possible would not have been possible without the active support and collusion of the pakistani army and uh, they continue with these designs to augment trouble in our country along with indian army chief director general of jammu and kashmir police dilbagh singh also expressed his concerns over all out attempts by pakistan and its sponsored terrorists to disrupt the measures being taken to safeguard the lives of the people in jammu and kashmir amid corona virus pandemic kuch cheeze samne aayi hain aur ye badi tashweesh ki baat hai ki jo abhi tak to sirf terrorist tak support karta tha pakistan अभी वो कोरोना के मरीज भी एक्सपोर्ट करेगा और जहाँ पर जो कश्मीर में हमारे लोग हैं उनको इन्फेक्शन फैलाएगा ये एक बात है जिसके ऊपर हर तरह का एहतियात करने की एहतियात बरतने की जरूरत है और ये तशवीश की बात है इन इट्स अटेम्प टू अनलिश के वैली Pakistan has stooped so low that it does not even care about the ऑन गोइंग पैंडमिक दैट हैज टेकन द टोल ऑन लैक्स ऑफ लाइफ अराउंड वर्ल्ड A US-based company that automates watch list compliance reveals a big alteration in the terrorist watch list of Pakistan, including Zakir Rahman Lakhvi, one of the terrorists responsible for the 26/11 Mumbai attack. The country has reportedly removed over 1,000 names from its terrorist watch list, clearly suggesting otherwise from its claims of dealing with terrorism emanating from its territory and the territories under its forceful occupation. A report. Pakistan's blatant lies over its non-existing action against terrorists got busted this week as Islamabad removed around 1800 names from its terror watch list because they could not justify having them there without taking action reports Castellum AI a US based regulatory technology company media reports suggest during an interrogation by the global terror financing watchdog Financial Action Task Force or FATF Pakistani officials informed that the terrorists were allowed to do whatever they wanted to for employment and to earn a living as there were no active cases against them with no answers for its lack of action against these individuals it became imperative for Pakistan to start removing them from the banned list under the guidelines of FATF these terrorists are responsible for dreaded terror activities in india afghanistan and even in pakistan there are many you know militants uh, which are uh, which are responsible for waging virtually you know or launching uh, militant activities responsible for killing innocent people in india afghanistan and even in pakistan some of them so therefore you know uh, it is expected pakistan not to ch- change this list according to the report published by castellum ai a so called proscribed persons list which is maintained by pakistan's national counter terrorism authority or nacta contained about 7600 names in 2018 but it has been reduced to fewer than 3800 in the past 18 months the report also reveals that zakir rahman the 2008 mumbai attack mastermind and lt operations commander is one among those whose names have been removed from the terror watch list however it is largely known that lakhvi's name was never on the watch list despite a critical ordinance signed by former pakistan president mamnoon hussain in february 2018 that ensured that all un proscribed terrorists were listed by pakistan's nacta2 since pakistan's military establishment supersedes all domestic and global orders the inaction and non conviction of these terrorists that led to the removal of names explains the status of a puppet judiciary in the country that is fostering terrorism the pakistani judiciary itself is a very close ally of the pakistani military establishment we have seen number of occasion you know it is always siding with the militants it's always siding uh, with the army you know. and uh, they promote the, the it is very anti india 
in most of the cases we have seen, you know, they have released uh, all those militants who were responsible for waging attack in India. Several of the names removed from Pakistan's list appear to be aliases for designated terrorists listed on the US or United Nations sanctions list, reports Castellum AI. India has often given names of terrorists and terror organizations involved in anti-India activities, but eventually paying no heeds to its neighbor's dossiers, Pakistan always gives relief to these proscribed and dreaded terrorists residing in the country. We have given them dossiers, after dossiers, number of people, you know. And sometimes when international pressure or India's pressure comes, they are arrest and then later it was released for lack of evidence or anything. Else. So a military uh, judiciary has become virtually an, uh, an important asset of the Pakistani establishment. So one should not expect uh, any hope from this judiciary. According to the Wall Street Journal, an American newspaper, no public explanation was given for the removals of the names. But according to a Pakistani official, the exercise was a part of the country's efforts to comply with the commitment to strengthen its counter-terrorism safeguards. However, the inaction against terrorists and then the removal of names clearly indicates towards strengthening relations between Pakistan's Prime Minister Imran Khan and the Pakistani military establishment, which is meant to safeguard the interests of terrorists and not the nation at large. The elected government is also in league with the army, you know, supports. In fact, the Prime Minister Imran Khan openly says that he uh, cooperates with the army in solving the problem of the country, you know. So one should not expect any justice from these people. Global standards call for countries to communicate delistings to the financial sector immediately upon taking such action. But Wall Street Journal reveals that Pakistan, which designates entities and persons with suspected links to terrorism under its Anti-Terrorism Act of 1997, hasn't historically done so. Pakistan already features in the grey list of FATF for terror financing, a further decision on Pakistan, which was to be taken up in the June plenary session, has been postponed until October 2020 in the wake of the coronavirus pandemic. Grave human rights violations by Pakistan's military against Pashtuns in the country's northwest has given rise to large-scale movements and protests by Pashtuns in Pakistan. Activists associated with movements for Pashtuns say that their community has been the target of violence at the hands of both the Taliban and the Pakistani military for two decades. Here is a report. The plight of the Pashtuns of Pakistan runs deep and it's rooted in a series of unfortunate historical events that has led to systematic discrimination of their ethnic group. Discrimination along with violent operations has severed the condition of Pashtuns who are helplessly fighting for their rights since a couple of decades. They are targeted by the Pakistan army in the name of counter-terrorism operation against Taliban and have sustained irreparable damages for none of their mistake. Our house is getting destroyed every single day. Every single day our woman, for us our woman is our pride. Everything is our woman and our woman is getting brutally raped and, and tortured and which, which, we, which is not acceptable for us and we're not gonna, we're not gonna stop anymore. We're gonna stand up and we're gonna raise and we're gonna try to get as much help as we can from every angle. Pashtun Tahfuz movement, a movement for the rights of Pashtuns, demands a truth and reconciliation commission to address claims of extrajudicial killings and missing persons. The movement also claims that the military supported Pakistani Taliban or Tehreek-e-Taliban Pakistan terrorists 
and its leaders are being allowed to return to their tribal areas of Pakistan and Afghanistan in a secret deal with the military and the Pakistan Inter-Services Intelligence. Taliban, uh, if you look at it, is a mentality. It's a, it's a certain mentality which has been created by uh, ISI and there is a certain mentality which is uh, naive. They don't know anything. They, they, they're being trained. In spite of horrific methods of repression being used for Pashtun movement, PTM activists say they have nothing more to lose and will continue to protest. Gilgit Baltistan has been drilling under Pakistani subjugation for more than seven decades. Islamabad has used all its brute force to marginalize and suppress the indigenous people of the region. Anti-terrorism Act of Pakistan is one such tool that has for long been used as an instrument to stifle the voice of the people of Gilgit Baltistan raised against the atrocities of Pakistani government, a report. People in Gilgit Baltistan are raising voice against the misuse of Anti-Terrorism Act against the indigenous people and political activists. The act, which was introduced to expeditiously bring the perpetrators of terror to justice, has gradually become a tool of extrajudicial killing and repression for Islamabad. The activists are being arbitrarily arrested, detained and sometimes even hacked to death on the pretext of homeland security. Pakistan spy agency, the ISI, which plays an instrumental role in preparing the list of people to be trialed under Schedule 4, has shortlisted as many as 140 people from Gilgit, Baltistan. <laughs> The Schedule 4, which was essentially formulated to keep a judicial vigil on those indirectly associated with the terrorist organizations or with a previous criminal record, has been used as an instrument to muzzle the dissenting voices of the region that have dared to rise against the establishment. Pakistan's nefarious designs have been exposed time and again. Earlier, Baba John, a political activist, was also held under this act and was sentenced to life imprisonment. Anguished leaders of the region say that Islamabad has no jurisdiction to impose and target the people of the region. <laughs> Army generals working in cahoots with the tyrants of Islamabad have exploited the people of Gilgit Baltistan for more than seven decades and today when the people have started asking for their rights, they are being subjected to extreme high-handedness. In recent times, a slew of suppressive legislations have been forced upon the people of Gilgit Baltistan in a bid to keep them marginalized and deprived. Any voice seeking to peacefully combat the status quo has been crushed with brutal force. And with that, we come to the end of this edition of Newsweek South Asia. We will be back next week with more news, views and analysis from the subcontinent. Meanwhile, do keep writing to us at nwsa at ani.com. This is Surabhi Sharma 
signing off on the behalf of entire production team of Newsweek South Asia. Goodbye and take care. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.